Hello, my soccer universe. The big game in Germany ended in a rather lucky for Leverkusen 1-1 draw in Munich. It was a game that Bayern Munich bossed for most of the time, created many chances over Leverkusen with the first shot on goal of the game. Took the lead after Pavlovic conceded an unnecessary corner. The corner is then whipped in. It falls to Schalke who plays it over to Andre who one times it. Beautiful shot into the net. However, Pavlovic then shortly ever makes good on his mistake and with another thunderous shot from far out. I mean, the way he hit it so sweetly. 1-1. At the half, Bayern very much the better team. Gnabry had a glorious chance where he first hit the post and then on the rebound, the crossbar could have given Bayern Munich the lead. In the end, Bayern Munich with all the dominance could not score. It was a good defensive performance by Bayer Leverkusen. But yeah, in the end, I would say Bayern Munich would have deserved the win. Bayern Munich, of course, playing in their new Oktoberfest kits, which were a little bit odd. So let's look what else happened in the Bundesliga beside Leverkusen parking the bus and getting a point in Munich. Well, we had on Friday evening, Bochum a 2-0 lead at Dortmund. Our Dortmund do come back. Giresi just before the half pulls one back and then they score three more for a 4-2 win. Gladbach got a very messy 1-0 win at home to Union Berlin. In a dreadful game, Quanchara scoring deep in stoppage time. Out of nowhere. Leipzig put all the goal-scoring woes aside beating Augsburg 4-0 at home. It was the Seshko Openda Simons show. The SOS attacking line. And yes, Augsburg missed a penalty in between as well. The only good thing for Augsburg, those wonderful jerseys that they had other than that it was all Leipzig it was a great showing of theirs in that form they probably can challenge and while there's a slight pile up on the top of the Bundesliga table Stuttgart could not join that they held to a 2-2 draw in Wolfsburg very contentious one they had to come back twice they had a red card a red card for Wolfsburg was controversially called back in the end Undorf equalizes deep in stoppage time but it's neither Leverkusen nor Leipzig who are behind Bayern in second place this is Eintracht Frankfurt kind of an anonymous start to the season I would say they get a 4-2 win at Holstein Kiel, Holstein Kiel, twice equalizing by the end, it's Marmouche and Tuta to get Frankfurt the win. But the outstanding result of the entire match, they came last, Hoffenheim after 12 minutes was 3-0 up against Werder Bremen, then Nzoki sent off with a red card and just before the half, Bremen had equalized already and then Stage who scored a hat-trick overall, gets the winning goal in the 49th minute. Absolute mad game. PSV are still perfect in the Eredivisie, this time going to Tilburg and beating Willem de 2-0 with Ricardo Pepe scoring twice in the second half. While in the replay of last year's Baker final, Feyenoord again cannot win. In fact, they only get a very, very late equalizer to avoid the first defeat of the season at NEC. Meanwhile, the teams that did so well in Europe played then later on, Twente getting a 1-0 win over Nac Breda thanks to Van Vos Winkel penalty. After destroying Besiktas, Ajax get a rather unforced 2-0 win with two late Eight goals at Wahlweig, Traoré and Hutz being on the score sheet. But the biggest result of the week came late in Alkmaar, where AZ took the lead through Parrot. And you know, Alkmaar were the only team that were keeping up with Eindhoven. However, Utrecht turned it around. Kathleen equalizes before the half time, and then Aronson gets a winner for Utrecht. Big win for them. If you take into account the games played, Utrecht are already ahead of AZ. With Strasbourg getting a deserved 1-0 win over OM on Sunday evening thanks to Merera goal. There are only two tied on the top of the table in Ligue 1 anymore. The first one of those are of course PSG who beat Rennes at home convincingly. 3-1 Barcola scoring a brace. It's also disallowed goal by Marquinhos and Lee Kangin. Also gets in on the action very little on Kalimundo. Pulls one back for Rennes. Then on Sunday, Monaco, who were celebrating the centenary with an absolutely beautiful, gorgeous black jersey, rejoined PSG on top of Ligue 1. However, it needed a very, very, very late Camara goal, assisted by Mbolo, to give them that win over Montpellier. Meanwhile, Lyon bounced back from their shock defeat from the past weekend to OM with a 2-1 away win at Toulouse. A win that they absolutely did not deserve. They weren't doing anything. It was an own goal and a very late on Fofana gets a winner, but Toulouse should have gotten more out of that one. And last and definitely not least, Keita Nakamura, former last star, again strikes for Stade de Reims. This time he again gets a go-ahead goal at Angers, then his buddy Ito doubles the lead in the end, Reims winning 3-1.
Let's recap also what happened on the top of the Premier League. The absence of Rodri definitely showed for Manchester City. They only play a 1-1 at Newcastle. Yes, they took the lead to Guardiola. Yes, they had more chance in the first half. Second half, Newcastle adjusted, got the equalizer early on through a Gordon penalty. Meanwhile, Arsenal escaped a visit by Leicester with a 4-2 win. However, the goals came very, very late. They had a 2-0 halftime lead through Martinelli and Trossard. Why was he playing? He just got a red card. League Cup, I guess. Then James Justin equalizes for Leicester. However, later on, Ndidi instead Sobishan scores an own goal and Havertz doubles the lead for Arsenal. Liverpool get a similarly unconvincing win. 2-1 at Wolves. Konate and Salah scoring the two goals. It's really not much to talk more about this game. And then the nominal top game between United and Spurs really wasn't because Spurs were all over United creating the highest ever recorded XG in the Premier League. Scoring early. Van der Ven. Quick run. Brandon Johnson puts it in in third minute. Spurs missing plenty of chances. Then Bruno Fernandes is sent off. Maybe a yellow could have been enough. Kulusevski right after half makes it 2-0 and Solanke really puts the pain into United. How long will it be for Ten Hag to stay there? After this round we have a real pile up on top of the Premier League table with five teams within two points. And Aston Villa could have joined Liverpool up top. However, they don't manage to get the win despite turning it around in the first half at Ipswich. However, Delep gets an equalizer for Ipswich in the second half. Kind of a funny playground goal with all the step overs that he used in the build-up. And so Villa are now overtaken by Chelsea, who won 4-2 at home to Brighton. All goals coming in the first half. It was a ridiculous game, especially the highline by Brighton. Cole Palmer being the star of the show, scoring four goals. First one ever to do so in the Premier League, four goals in one half. Absolutely crazy game. Fulham are meanwhile establishing themselves as best of the rest. They win this time 1-0 at Nottingham Forest, thanks to a Raul Jimenez penalty. And despite being 1-0 down at the half, Everton get their first win of the season. McNeil scoring two to give Everton a much needed first win. Meanwhile, Brentford continued a great streak of scoring the first minute, but again they don't get a win. This time it's a 1-1 at home to Fletchling, West Ham, Suchik getting the equal are much needed points for Lopetegui. And then in the South Coast Derby yesterday, Bournemouth easily disposed of Southampton 3-1. All the Bournemouth goals came already in the first half. In Portugal, all four big teams won with big score lines, and it's remarkable that while Sporting are still perfect, they had the smallest win only a 3 0 at Estoril. And Gyokeres this time not scoring it was Katama Morita and Braganka in stoppage time who give them the 3 0 win. City rivals Benfica seemingly also have rightened the ship. Yes, they were 1 0 down early on to Gil Vicente, but then the turner Otomendi Akutukoglu turned the game around before the half, and then three more in the second one for a resounding 5 1 home win. Porto also get a four goal home win 4 nil. all goals coming in the second half and Braga also big 4 nil win over Rio Ave two goals in the first half 2-1 in the second and thanks to Vittorio de Guimaraes dropping points at Casa Pia they now overtake their big rivals but they're sitting behind the surprise team of the season so far Santa Clara who get another win 1 nil over Boa Vista and they are sitting fourth in the table huge shout out to the newly promoted side Hello my soccer gamers, it's early in the season and La Liga already had their second midweek round completed this time with eight fixtures and Sevilla got a crucial second win of the season to ease their worries for relegation a teeny bit. Tuesday evening we had also Real Madrid running out to a 3-0 lead at home to Alaves with Lucas Vasquez scoring already in the first minute, Mbappé just before the half and then Rodrigo just after the half. Seemed like they're cruising, however late on Alaves pulled two back in the 85th and the 86th and they were some nervy moments at the Bernabeu and in addition there were quite a few yellow cards given for arguing with the referee especially to Vinny Jr that Angelotti even said we have to stop this. Girona had plenty of chances against the Rayo however the Rayo defense held tight and it ended in a nil nil draw while Barcelona also were not too convincing after the injury to Ter Stegen however they get the win thanks to a Lewandowski goal in the 19th minute and then they just saw the game out but it was not a pretty watch. Villarreal continued their great form this time getting a comeback win against Espanyol although the first two goals came in stoppage time of the first half Ayota Perez scoring both goals for Villarreal who might be an outside shot for a Champions League space this season. And fight as hard as they might. In the end, it's Atletico Madrid who win because they have more quality on the field. It's Julian Alvarez getting a 90th minute winner after a Griezmann assist. And so Atleti with their fourth win of the season ahead of the big derby on the weekend. The 
The standout result of the La Liga weekend was definitely Osasuna beating Barcelona 4-2 at home and yes Hansi Flick wanted to prepare for young boys and so he played his young boys and they were completely outclassed by Osasuna. Budimir scoring two, Brian Zaragoza again scoring against Barcelona, a beautiful goal. Late on Laminia Mal pulls one back but the perfect streak for Barcelona is over. Very much a surprise team of the season are Mallorca who get another win, this time a 2-1 away win at Real Valladolid with Calerian scoring the opener, Valeri then doubling the lead before Valladolid pull one back in stoppage time. And wouldn't you know it, Real Sociedad finally also get a win, a big 3-0 over Valencia, Take Kubo opening the scoring but it is then substitute Oscarsson who makes the scoreline emphatic by scoring two goals in the second half. Iago Aspas again saves Celta, this time he salvages a 1-1 draw at home to Girona. While Los Celso scores again for Betis to give them a 1-0 lead over Espanyol, they already had missed a penalty in the first half, Los Celso comes up in the 85th minute again with another goal for them. He is in good form. However, the team that is most likely to round up the top four in Spain this season is Villarreal. They get another win, this time against last place Las Palmas. It's a 3-1 win with Nicolas Pepe being on the score sheet. There's also a penalty missed in there, so the scoreline could have been higher. However, the big talking point came, of course, in one of the biggest games of the weekend in all of Europe, the Derby Madrileño. Due to Barcelona losing, there was a little bit more at stake because a win could have closed the gap, especially for Real Madrid to Barcelona, down to one point. Point and Atletico Madrid could have actually gotten a win that will keep them potentially as a contender. Based on that, the game was not great. Actually, it was Real Madrid who had a little bit more of the first half, second half. Yeah, when I was watching, there was always a little bit coming from Atletico Madrid. But right at that moment, then Vinny Jr. puts in a cross to Militao, who has it in his 64th minute. And then the scenes that we do not want to talk about, but that happened. All hell break. Luz Kutwa was celebrating ahead of the Atleti Ultras. Not exactly a joyous bunch of people who then proceed to hurl objects at him, as him as a former Atleti player who now plays for Real Madrid. The game has to be suspended for a few minutes. The lasting image of the derby was also made with Simeone and Coque and Atletico Madrid players talking to these fans, trying to calm things down. In the end, actually, this helped Atletico Madrid, despite all the ugliness behind it, because they suddenly look better. Simeone made the correct changes and then laid on Angel Correa in a rather old move but great looking salvages them deep in stoppage time to make it 1-1 before Endrick had a really good chance but he decided to shoot it from far out which definitely shows his inexperience. However, the big talking point came, of course, in one of the biggest games of the weekend in all of Europe, the Derby Madrileño. Due to Barcelona losing, there was a little bit more at stake. Based on that, the game was not great. Actually, it was Real Madrid who had a little bit more of the first half, second half. Vinny Jr. puts in a cross to Militao, who has it in his 64th minute. And then all hell break loose. Kutwa was celebrating ahead of the Atleti Ultras, who then proceed to hurl objects at him. The game has to be suspended for a few minutes. It's the lasting image of the derby was also made with Simeone and Coque and Atletico Madrid players talking to these fans. In the end, actually, this helped Atletico Madrid, despite all the ugliness behind it, because they suddenly look better. And then laid on Angel Correa in a rather odd move, but great looking, salvages them deep in stoppage time to make it 1-1 before Endrick had a really good chance, but he decided to shoot it from far out, which definitely shows his inexperience. Hey there, I really hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you may enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hit the little bell icon, so you get notified whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day. Bye!